somebody's had actually a count, so we actually have a precise number. There are 646 of us here today. It's been absolutely fantastic. I'll be honest, when I saw what the weather was like this morning, I thought there might only be two or three hundred, and it would turn into a bit of a damn squid. Apart from it, you've done fantastic. Well done to you all. Well, anyway, there you go. over 600 um, people here today. Um, Fantastic. Um, Turnout today. He's a performance poet from Wimano. It will be known to many of you. Can I have a big hand of applause, please, for Martin Newell? There you go, it's our first performer of the day. Good afternoon, fellow dissenters. Can you hear us all right? Uh, well, first thing I have to say is that I was. Uh, I was brought up in a services family and went to 11 different schools and I left when I was 15 with no qualifications, I've never been back. And were it not for libraries, I would probably not be speaking to you because I wouldn't be able to read this. Um, and wherever we went, we didn't carry books around with us, you kind of, some of you don't in the services. So your mum gets you enrolled in a library. And when I was sent back to England, because my dad was in a sensitive posting, in the middle of the 60s, dressed like a 50s schoolboy, uh, my granddad was given only one, ins two instructions. One, enrol him in the library and get him a short back and sides every <laughs> six weeks. Um, Charles Dickens in um, Christmas Carol comes across the ghost, of, when he meets the ghost of Christmas present towards the end of that walk, the ghost unfurls his cloak and beneath this cloak are two children, wild-eyed, crazy-looking children. The ghost of Christmas present points this out to Scrooge. And he says, you see this girl, this is want. And this boy is ignorance. But of the two, beware the boy. For on his forehead are written these words, doom. Now, we've already got men sleeping in the streets and food banks, so we've got want covered, and if we are not very careful, we will have ignorance too, is what I reckon. Uh, the only thing I can say is, what do they think they're doing? What do they think they're doing? Closing down libraries. We've had, we've had libraries longer than we've had public loos. I mean, the public loos are disappearing, but you know, when we when we lose libraries, we've really lost civilization. So with that, I'll just do you um, do you a couple of couple of poems here. No, I won't detain you long because I know even readers have an aversion to poetry. I tend to write the rhyming stuff. You'll notice I've got my town hall hat on. I don't get much chance to use it elsewise. This is called, um, this is about the closure of Essex libraries. It's called The Way We Was. He wanders loudly as a clone and curses at his mobile phone, bellowing in drizzly rain. Should I have took an earlier train? They're late now for his interview. He glowers sullen on the street whilst Charles Dickens' ghost looks on, remarking tartly, this is sweet, oh, this is good. Oh, this is rich, what? Seventeen decades got past. Young ignorance returns at last. Slack-jawed, dull-eyed, benighted boy. The hero of the hoi polloi. Alas, too well he knows this town. For here, they closed the library down. Books, the market trader yells. Books, so cheap it seems a sin. These packages of words, ideas which at a glance seem far too thin to hold such worlds as dwell within. Just fragile paper, printer's ink, for all of that they make you think, and beckon to the thirsty mind. Come in, come in. I'm yours to drink, writers here of great renown. Drink until you fear you'll drown. You'll pick your volume, find your voice. Where Barbara Cartland lies with Joyce, where Milligan and Milton meet, and wild, dishevelled from the street, comes swanning in to take his place. For here there will be no disgrace, no judgment, censure, not for those who wore their clothes, wore their thoughts as they were clothed, and here they hang, still on the rack. Please borrow them, but bring them back. Don't forget, 
to bring them back. Um, while I'm here, just to, to remind you that Essex is the home of uh, political dissent. Chelmsford in particular, which I think is a lovely town. Every time I come here, I love it. I think, why can't Colchester be a bit more like that? Hey, hey. This is called, a, and this is for people in London who drive up through Cambridge rather than going through Essex, because they're scared of it. As you enter Essex, traveller, those three shaxes on that sign mean you are in Saxon country, and just for the record, mine. Essex sneered at and derided, home of Dazza, Lee and Jays, where the oil drizzling classes never come for holidays. Doesn't seem to know Polenta. Yes, well, he's from Essex, dear. What, you mean the home of writers, Ronald Blythe and Germaine Greer? Where our schools do rather better than the cities, year on year. Must be that benighted county where we drink St Ella beer, where the A12 threads its magic, where the shopping malls, the grail, which you metro snobs ho hum at when you travel up by rail till your pied de terres in Suffolk, Walberswick via Darsham Station. Essex, England's driest county, prettier than its reputation. Here beside the jigsaw coastline, out along the water's edge, seagulls, waders, geese and moorhens, sea kale, samphire, gorse and sedge. Further in, the houses hidden, Flemish roofs and weather vanes, where the woodland ponds and copses huddle out of sight of trains. Essex with its secret accent, not the one that's estuarine, not the older London Essex, not quite Suffolk in between. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, you're all right in, oh yeah, Christ, yeah, yeah. When last spoken, pure and simple, noticeably rural, alien. It may sometimes be mistaken by a stranger for Australian. Essex, great for writing, painting, artists like a coastal light. Do we need to be made over? I don't think so, someone might. Bring the cultured world to Essex. Yeah, go on, we've got the stuff. Wheel the oil drizzlers in then, if they think they're hard enough. <laughs> Finally, one last, I, I won't detain you long as I said. I've got to do this because um, I've been writing for a national newspaper for a while, but one of them rang me up and said, we can't get anyone to do us a D-Day landing poem. So I did, because I thought it ought to be commemorated, and if the poet laureates can't do it, well, I will. Their names were British names. To read them now, it strikes you still. Shacklock, Collier, Ottershaw, MacDonald, Morgan, Hill. One murky summer morning, a channel churning grey, a chug of ships and landing craft with an army on its way. Boys of 17 who'd stumbled straight from school to war. Blokes strolled in from Civvy Street, from forge or foundry floor. All into this confusion, its rumble and its thud, the nausea of the engine and the copper taste of blood. In monochrome, these pictures say much. They still convey the strength, determination and the courage of that day. But not the icy inner fear which must have lurked beneath that burden of uncertainty which battle will bequeath to Shacklock, Collier, Uttershaw, their comrades and their friends who won us peace and freedom, the best of any ends. The sea shall call their surnames of the ranks which have been thinned where the marum grass of Normandy still curtsies in the wind. Thank you, I'm Martin Newell. Thank you very much. Save our libraries. Thank you very much, uh, Martin.